Hello, my name is Madvina Latifa and I'm a PhD student at Mallardalen University, Sweden. My current research is focused on the generation of synchronization transformations for blended modeling. To provide a better understanding of this research work, Modo, a modeling tool user, and Denji, a DSML engineer, will assist me throughout today's presentation. Now, domain-specific modeling tools have predominantly focused on the mutually exclusive use of notations. And by notation, we refer to the concrete syntax. Modeling tool users, such as Modo, must decide with which one to go with. In this work, we focus on the graphical and textual notations. Now, if Modo chooses a graphical modeling tool, then he will miss all the benefits of textual modeling tools, such as the manipulation of models with syntax agnostic editing operations like copy paste or search replace. And if he goes for a textual modeling tool, he will miss all the benefits of graphical ones, such as grasping large amounts of information at a glance and not only. Moreover, Modo knows that a particular type of notation is not always equally preferred or understood by all stakeholders that he will be collaborating with. So that can limit communication between stakeholders. But is there a way to allow the seamless use of both notations in one modeling tool? Yes, there is. And that is blended modeling, which allows model to interact seamlessly with a single model through multiple notations. And this is a great benefit because it allows model to make use of different notations that can allow different components of a given system to be modeled more effectively. And of course, this will also be very beneficial because he can now more easily collaborate with other stakeholders that use different notations from what he does. But okay, blended modeling makes model happy. But let us now see things from a different perspective and let us now see the effort that is required from a DSML engineer such as Denji to provide model this blended modeling environment. Now, in this work, we focus on the cases where each notation or concrete syntax has a dedicated abstract syntax. So here in this example, we have a graphical and textual state machine model. And these models conform to two separate meta models that formalize state machine concepts in slightly different manners. To be able to allow for the seamless use of both notations, the changes made in one editor must be propagated to the other and vice versa. That means that there is a need to define a synchronization infrastructure. So now we have a task for Denji, our DSML engineer. He must manually write model transformations to propagate the changes made in one editor to the other and vice versa. And writing model transformations isn't a trivial thing especially for complex industrial grade software intensive systems. So Denji does not seem to be so happy about it. But this isn't all because as software systems continue to evolve, so do the DSMLs used to describe the systems. And what has happened in this case is that new concepts are added to the underlying meta model of this graphical editor, which means that we have meta model evolution. And being that we synchronize on the level of the abstract syntax, when the meta models evolve, the transformations in most cases become obsolete and they do not provide the expected outcome. So what should Denji do now? The task for Denji is to continuously evolve the model transformations according to meta model changes. So he has to repeat the same process again and again. So to summarize, we discussed how blended modeling is beneficial to modeling tool users such as model. However, we also discussed that there is a great amount of manual effort that is required from DSML engineers to build the synchronization infrastructure required for blended modeling. Therefore, in this work, we are focusing on making Denji's and other DSML engineers' life easier by automating the engineering of synchronization transformations across multiple notations for blended modeling. The approach that we propose to reach this goal consists of defining a mapping modeling language and higher order transformations. Now, let me get into some more details. We have two meta models, DSML A and DSML B, and we need to provide a synchronization infrastructure between the two. So with a manual approach, Denji would have to manually define model to model transformations using a model transformation language, such as for example, QVTL. What we want to do is to help Denji 
to focus on the domain logic of how the concepts of these meta models relate to one another instead of writing low level model transformations. Therefore, we define a mapping modeling language that will allow the specification of mapping rules between two arbitrary equal based domain specific modeling languages. Denji will now have to instantiate mapping models in order to describe the mappings. Moreover, we define higher order transformations that leveraging the mapping models generate the synchronization transformations conforming to the QVTO language. When it comes to the mapping modeling language, we have defined it in Xtext. Therefore, the mapping models can be defined using both textual and tree-based editors. And the textual syntax resembles object-oriented programming languages. The benefit is that now DSML engineers focus on the domain logic rather than lower level model transformations. In summary, with our approach, starting from two DSMLs, the DSML engineer must define a mapping model. All these three elements will then be used as input to higher order transformations that will generate model transformations which are currently being defined manually. So in summary, uh, we have provided a generative solution for the provision of synchronization transformations for arbitrary equal based DSMLs. And the solution facilitates the coevolution of synchronization transformations in response to DSML evolution. Moreover, it does support the enrichment of modeling tools through the inclusion of additional modeling languages by facilitating the establishment of the synchronization infrastructure between them pairwise. And this can also be very helpful for what we call fast prototyping. So you wanna see if you actually want to add an additional notation to the modeling tool. Um, moreover, it enables the inclusion of domain experts that have no model transformation language knowledge and it also makes the process more accurate and less cumbersome for developers. Last but not least, the solution facilitates the transition from a homogeneous modeling approach, which is appropriate for simple systems, to a blended modeling methodology, which is appropriate for complex industrial grade software intensive systems. For future work, we intend to focus on model coevolution in response to meta model changes and on automatically portioning an existing meta model and using the portions to generate graphical and textual editors for them. Thank you all for your attention. And now it's demo time where we will provide a few details on the tool that we have implemented. Thank you. Okay, so demo time. We will first begin by introducing our meta models. And in this example, we will be using UMLRT for state machines. We have two meta model, uh, one for which we will instantiate graphical models. And for the other one, we will instantiate textual models. For the graphical one, we are using the meta model used in Pepar SRT. While for the textual one, we are using a meta model that we have defined in Xtext for one of our industrial partners that uh, wanted to complement the currently existing graphical modeling tool with a textual notation. Uh, while the two meta models do overlap, being that they both use as blueprint the UML RT for state machines profile, our partner required the customized textual notation. So there exist a few differences between the two meta models. So for example, while in the first one, we have the concept of simple state and composite state, in the other one, we only have the concept of state, while in the first one, we have uh, the concept of transition. In the second one, we have the concept of initial transition, transition, internal transition, history transition. And there are also a few more details that differ between the two meta models. Now, uh, the next thing that we will do is that we have to define the mapping models. So, uh, Let's close the meta models and let us start defining the mapping models. We will define the mapping models inside the folder where we have defined the higher order transformations. New other, we search for mapping. That is the extension of our mapping models. And here we say graphical to textual. 
root is model. And so here we have created our graphical to textual mapping model. So as we said, we define this in Xtext, so we are able to define it either using the textual editor or tree-based editor. So let us begin by defining it in the textual editor. Mapping model, we will give it a name, which will be graphical to textual. And then it requires a source meta model. In this case, it will be the graphical one. This is the name of the package. And we will also define the target meta model. HCL scope. So up to here, we have defined the name of the mapping model and the source and the target meta model. And we will begin defining the mapping rules in the tree base editor to get an overview of that also. So here now we can start defining new rules. We define the graphical to textual mapping model. It consists of the source meta model, target meta model, and all the necessary rule to map between the concepts of the source and target uh, meta models. So if we see the first mapping rule, it maps the state machine concept in the source meta model to the state machine concept in the target meta model. So the user here chooses from a drop down list the concepts that need to be mapped. And the name is optional because in the higher order transformations, we generate them automatically and assign as a default operator. So uh, the user doesn't have to, to change it here in this case. Now, what we will do is that we will generate the model transformations from this graphical to textual mapping. And for that, we will open the higher order transformations. And we will run them. So here it says, please specify the path of the mapping model. So this is the path of the mapping model. And here we need to specify the path where we want to generate the model transformation file. So it will be generated here in transforms. So let us find the path for that. This is the path. And if we do a refresh, we see that now we have the graphical to textual model transformation. We will do the same for the textual to graphical mapping model. So let's close this. This is the textual to graphical mapping model. And once again, we will generate the model transformations. So we still need to specify the path. And also the target path for the model transformation. Refresh. Here we have textual to graphical model transformations. What we will do is that we will try to make a comparison between the mapping model and the generated model transformations to see what the user needs to define and what is generated. So we will begin uh, with the state machine to state machine mapping rule. As we can see, we have defined two mapping rules mapping the same concepts. However, for the first one, we have defined also a condition. Now, if the condition evaluates to true, the first state machine to state machine mapping rule will be executed. Alternatively, the second one will. We can see that the first and second state machine to state machine mapping rules are generated as state machine to state machine zero and state machine to state machine one. What is interesting is that we have another state machine to state machine disjunct mapping rule. 
uh, this is the disjunctive rule because being that there exist two rules with matching source and target, the higher order transformations have generated a disjunctive rule so that the first mapping rule whose condition evaluates the true from this list here will be executed. Now, the user does not have to define anything uh, related to this disjunctive rule or the list of disjuncted rules. Only has to define this two state machine to state machine mapping rules. Uh, this is something that in QVTO can also be achieved with an if-else statement, which we also do support. But this is one way which allows the user to define only the source and target concepts, a mapping condition here, and uh, the higher order transformations will do the rest. And uh, in fact, this is not the only case of disjunctive rules. As we can see, uh, we also have transitions to transition disjunct uh, mapping rule. We only had to define this mapping rule here and the higher order transformations analyzed the involved meta models and their relations and also the mapping model to generate uh, this transformation here. So, um, moreover, we also support the concept of abstract mapping and also of inheritance. So, we can see that we have abstract mapping here. So, we have mapped state to state. And from that, we have state to state disjunct. And we also have abstract state to state, which, has, which have been uh, generated uh, for us. So in this case, we did not have to know that this would be an abstract mapping or that this would be a disjunctive mapping. We only say that we want to map these two concepts. Um, another thing is that the user doesn't have to define the invoked rules either. Here, for example. Uh, because, once again, that is done automatically by iterating through the mapping rules that are defined in the mapping model and checking which one has the appropriate source and target. So, for example, here we would want to have exit point to exit point. So, the higher order transformations go through the mapping model, see if this rule exists, and then print it here. Um, now, these things mean that the user is not only relieved from writing model transformations, but also the amount of information that is required from the user side is minimized. Because as we said, the user doesn't need to have information on disjunctive rules, on disjuncted rules, on which one will be uh, executed first. The user doesn't have to know the syntax here on how to write uh, this model transformation when there exists a concept in the target meta model but not on the source meta model. The user doesn't have to invoke um, the, the mapping rules. The user doesn't need to know anything about inheritance, etc. So um, now as we could see, we had to define the source and target elements to map between two concepts. But there are also cases when a concept in the target meta model does not have a match in the source meta model. An example of that is the composite state. So in that case, what we do is that we define a mapping rule that does not have a source but has a target and the higher order transformations immediately generate this part here and then we can of course populate the body with other mapping rules so uh, overall these are a few of the things that are supported by our solution and now we can proceed further with the model transformations that we have generated so uh, let us now run the model transformations so here we have uh, an instance of the graphical model 
uh, and what we will do is that we will generate a textual model from it. We will run the graphical to textual model transformation and we see that we now have a textual model. One thing we will do is that now we will make a change to the textual model just to see how the changes are then propagated to the graphical one. And now we run the textual to graphical model transformation. And we see that the name of the state has been changed.